Hey guys, it's Ben from Board to Bits here, and I'm going to show you today how to create a UI element that will close itself when you click away from it. I'll show you a quick example of what I'm talking about. This is um, a screen in my game, Greetings Human, that I'm working on, where you can click on any of these alien races and it will pop up this window that will eventually hold information about the race. Then if you want to close it, all you have to do is click anywhere outside of the window. So if you click on the window, nothing will happen, but then when you click off, it goes away. It's a little bit easier way of um, closing in and out of windows, gets the player moving through your information a little bit quicker, I find. Um, it was a little bit tricky to figure out exactly how to do that, though, so I wanted to share what I came up with with you guys today. So to start, we're going to open up a new project. We're going to call it Close on Blur. The reason for that being that in um, UI interfaces, um, when you click on a window, it's called focusing that window, and then when you click away from it, it's called blurring a window. So we're going to be closing it when the window blurs. Um, I'm choosing 2D here. You can use 2D or 3D because uh, we're going to just be using the UI canvas. And then we'll create the project. Let Unity do its thing. There are actually two ways of doing this. I'm going to show you one in this video, and then I'll do a second video with the other option. Uh, today's video is going to be showing you how to do this using some built-in component components that Unity provides as well as a little bit of custom code. Uh, the next video will show how to do it just with custom code. It's a little bit more self-contained but a little bit more involved as well. So to start we're just going to go up to game object UI and create a panel. This is going to be the panel that will close when we click off of it. We'll frame it up in the uh, scene view here. And you're going to want to shrink this down a little bit so that you have space that you can actually click off of the off of the panel on the screen otherwise this isn't going to work and we're going to just make it so that it doesn't stretch as well it's worth noting uh, when you create a panel in unity uh, the first time it'll also create a canvas for you as well as an event system the event system is important for how this is going to work so make sure you keep all of those there and we can quickly rename our panel as well, and we'll rename it to something like, uh, we'll just call it COB for close on blur. So now that we have our panel set up and ready to go, we can add a component, and we're going to add what is called an event trigger. And what an event trigger does, um, it's actually easiest if you just click the add new event type, it'll show you, it basically can keep track of a lot of different things, usually what you're doing with your mouse or your touches on a uh, touchpad. Um, the two that we're interested in right here are going to be pointer enter and pointer exit. And you'll notice it gives you this, uh, this panel here, which is very similar if you've worked with buttons at all in Unity, it's a very similar um, idea where basically what you can do is you can add a add an object to it and then use one of its functions when this thing happens. So in this case when the pointer enters whatever object function is tied in here will happen. Now this is just going to be basically using itself. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the COB panel and actually just drop it right in there. You can also drop in from any of the components and you'll still have access to all of the components here. So it doesn't really matter which one you throw in as long as you throw in one of your panels. Uh, we're going to do the same thing for the uh, pointer exit as well. We don't have the function yet that we want though, so we're just going to leave this here for the time being and we're going to start creating those functions. So the next thing you're going to need to do is add another component. In this case I'm just going to type in close on blur and there's nothing called that. So we're going to do new script. Uh, make sure the language is C-sharp, and then we're going to say create and add, and that will add the component here in your assets, but it will also automatically add it to the panel that we're working with right now. You can then double click on that script, and it'll open it up for you in MonoDevelop. I'm just going to load, and there we go. Now, um, this is going to be a pretty simple script. We don't. Um, we can pretty much use what we have here. We can actually get rid of void and start for right now. We don't need those, so we'll just highlight and delete those. And basically this script is going to do two things for us. The first thing it's going to do is keep track of whether or not the mouse is hovering over this panel. 
Um, Unity doesn't really do this on its own. Once something is off of the one, well, something is off of a U of I element, it kind of just loses track of it and doesn't doesn't know what's going on with it. Um, so that's why we need to keep track of that. And then the second thing it's going to do is going to close itself when it's appropriate. For that first one though, it's really just asking the question, is the mouse over me, yes or no? So we can use a bool variable and we'll just call that mouse hover to keep track of that. Um, nothing else needs to know this information, so we don't need to make it public. We can just leave it as that. You could write private if you wanted to. What we do need is a public function though that will let something else, in this case our event triggers, to um, set this mouse hover. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, um, we're going to do a public void function because it's not going to return anything and we're going to call it set hover. And we're going to add a bool parameter to it um, because we basically want to be able to tell this function whether to set it as true or set it as false. And we'll just call that hover for simplicity's sake. Use our brackets there to um, put what's going to happen inside. And this is actually going to be a really, really easy script. Basically what all this uh, function is going to do is say mouse hover should equal whatever hover is. So if hover is true, mouse hover will become true. And if it's false, mouse hover becomes false. So we're going to save that quickly. And now we have the func that public function we need for our event triggers. So we'll go back into Unity here. And we're going to go to our object. And for pointer enter, we're going to go down to close on blur. And we're going to find that new function that we created. And here we're going to set hover, and it's when the pointer is entering. So in this case, hovering is going to be true when it enters. So we want to make sure it's set to true. And how they do that is just a checkbox. Checked is true, unchecked is false. For pointer exit, we're going to do the exact same thing and still set the hover, but we're just going to leave it as false. So now what we have basically, quickly save, and we'll just save this as panel. And what this is basically doing now is saying when the mouse moves over, it's true. When the mouse moves off, it's false. So that's, like I said, we're just keeping track of where whether the mouse is over it or not, just with a simple bool and a really quick function there. And now we're going to go back into our script so that we can tell this how to close itself uh, when it's appropriate to do so, as I said. So basically, when, when is it appropriate to do so? Well, it's when the, when the player clicks and is off of the panel. So how we do that is we're going to do, to, in order to keep track of something like a click or a player, player input, we're going to need to use the void update function. You don't want to use this too often, but because this is just one panel and it's going to be a really simple function inside of it, it's OK to use. Um, if you have a lot of these panels around that you want to be keeping track of, it's probably better to use a manager or something rather than having an update function in all of them. And so like I said, we're basically looking at if the player finishes clicking and is outside of the panel. So that's going to be two different if statements we're looking at. We can combine them into one using a Boolean operator. So the first one is if the player is clicking. So we're going to say input dot get mouse button. And we're actually going to say get mouse button up. And the reason we're doing that is because if you've ever clicked in a program and realized, oh, I didn't want to click there, and you're still holding the button down, you can maybe, you maybe have that last ditch chance to move your mouse and then release it somewhere else and maybe the thing won't happen. So that's why we're saying get mouse button up is when, once you release it, it will check this. And for get mouse button up, you need to have an int as well, which is the button. Zero is the left click, uh, one is the right click. So we're just going to use zero for this. And then we're also going to say the other half of this now is and the mouse is not hovering. So we'll just do that with an exclamation point for not and not mouse hover. So if these two things are true, then we are going to close this. And how we close this is going to be, we're going to do it a really simple way right here, which is just going to be to set it, um, set the game object to inactive, which is going to basically make it, make the panel disappear for the purposes of the scene. So what we'll just do is we'll access the game object with a lowercase g game object, and then say dot set active. And then we have a bool there, so we're going to set that to false. So basically what's going to happen is if we click and we're off the panel, setting active goes to false.
and we save that and that's really all we need for this so if we go back to our back to unity and we start up the program play button everything's running so now we have this panel here we can click on the panel inside of it nothing happens we can even um, click outside the panel and hold down nothing happens nothing happens nothing happens now we're back on the panel and I release the button nothing happens but finally if we click anywhere off of the panel the panel goes away so that's pretty the pretty simple um, just using this event trigger to track whether or not the mouse is over the panel and then the uh, custom script handles the rest when the click happens off of the panel so that's all for this one like I say in the next video we'll show you how to do all of this just in the close on blur script um, it's going to get a little bit into namespaces and um, interfaces, so that's why it's a little bit more involved, and I'm going to save that for a second video. But this is, um, like I say, a pretty easy way to get this kind of functionality in your game. So I hope this helps you guys out, and I'll see you next time.